What's up everyone, this is Cole Davis. Welcome to the 47th Transcription Tuesday. Sorry I'm a little late. I was in Minneapolis all week finishing up my first official album, which I am so excited about. Anyway, today we're gonna to be talking about the great Paul Chambers who we all know and love, but there's one thing you might not know about his playing. What do you get when you speed up a Paul Chambers bass line? get a Paul Chambers solo. That's a Paul Chambers lick in a solo, but that's also his bass line sped up. So when he plays his bass line, he's not just thinking about bass line licks. He's not just thinking about the changes. He's thinking about the same vocabulary he would play in his solo. Here's his bass line. And now if I want to play that as a solo, that is a straight bebop lick. And that's actually something that Paul Chambers would play in a solo. When he was playing bass lines, he wasn't just thinking about, let me outline the changes in this way. He was thinking about playing melodies and playing phrases all of the time. And that's what makes him one of the great bass players to ever live. Now let's see what happens when I play the reverse, a Paul Chambers solo as a Paul Chambers bass line. That's a pretty awesome lick to begin with. But the crazy thing is, if I turn it into a bass line, it also works as a bass line. That's a great bass line. Of course, I had to adapt it a little bit, unlike the first example where I just sped it up. But it's more or less the same exact language. You can find both of these examples as well as everything else I play in this video on my Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis Music. Folks, we have the number one Patreon for upright bass players. I cannot believe how many people are on the Patreon. I'm so proud of what we're all building together on this page. We have Cole's Bass Hang, which is a chat room with over 700 members. We have my books, including the 25 Easy Bebop Licks for Upright Bass, heavily discounted at over 50% with your Patreon subscription. You get two of my albums that are not available on streaming. You also get the Monday morning warm up where I warm up with you every Monday and you get a weekly tune in where we learn a tune together every Friday. And of course you get Transcription Tuesday every Tuesday with a new transcription delivered directly to you. So sign up today at www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis Music. We're gonna move on and explore Paul Chambers' two feel. Everyone talks about his solos, everyone talks about his bass lines, not enough people talk about his two feel. He's one of the great masters of the two beat. So that is a funky bass line. I am actually surprised that this bass line hasn't been sampled because this sounds like something that a 90s hip hop artist would sample right away. Maybe it has been sampled. If you know of any samples of this bass line, please let me know in the comments. But the bass line just goes like this.
reminds me of that tune Fever, which I've had to play on hundreds of singer gigs in my life. But it's much better. This is a much better bass line than Fever. It, it just reminds me of that tune. The way he's playing it is really important. When we play a two feel, we almost always hit the bass or use our fingers to keep the time or do something extra musical that we don't need to do. We'll do something like this. I have to stop myself with this. But Paul Chambers never does that. I don't think there's one recording where he does that. He just does this. So that bass line is classic Paul Chambers. No embellishments, no need for any of that. Just letting the notes breathe and letting the notes speak for themselves. He does the same thing in the tune. This is the intro to the tune. Now he's playing over the tune softly as in a morning sunrise. He plays. That's the first four bars. Again, no extra notes, no skags, just a pure two feel bass line. And what he's doing is, I talk about this with my students a lot, he's highlighting that beat four, because the beat four is the most important beat in the two feel. If anyone listens to New Orleans music, like Louis Armstrong or Jabbo Smith or anything like that, the tuba player is always emphasizing beat four on either the second bar of the phrase or the fourth bar of the phrase. Paul Chambers, often does both. He does the second bar and the fourth bar. So these first two bars are a good example of that. Right, that beat four, you can hear on this recording that he's accenting that beat four. He really understood this stuff. He was around it, he played it, he learned from the masters of this kind of playing, and that's why he became one of the masters of the two feel. It's not just It's not just that, the two feel is much deeper than that. And highlighting that beat four gives you the momentum to get to the next phrase. It gives you that kind of, almost like a tension and release, almost like a very subtle rhythmic tension and release. It's really fun once you get it down, and you don't have to listen to Louis Armstrong. I like Louis Armstrong, so I do listen to him, but you know, we are in the year 2024, so if that's not what you're listening to, that's fine. But the two feel is really, really important, and it provides a cornerstone for an entire century of black American music. So Paul Chambers is one of the great masters of two feel, and his two feel is well worth checking out. A lot of people are just into the solos or they're into the walking bass lines, which is great, but don't sleep on his two feel. So that was the first two A's of a B flat rhythm change except that doesn't really sound like a rhythm change. If I play that slowly,
that's not really a rhythm changes. That sounds like somebody just walking in B flat, but it's somehow so good. If I'm gonna play a rhythm changes the way most bass players, myself included, would play a rhythm changes, it would sound like this. he plays a rhythm change, it sounds like this. Now if you listen to that, you play that back, you will hear how much better the bass line I just played is from a usual rhythm changes bass line. And what makes it so special is once again, He's not thinking about nailing the changes. He's thinking about playing phrases and melodies and using the bebop language to create something really beautiful and really musical as opposed to just playing the changes as a bass player. All right, now we're gonna move on and finish up with the greatest Paul Chambers bass line in my opinion, which you will recognize as soon as I play it. was that was Miles Davis's Kind of Blue, one of the greatest albums ever made, with the signature track being So What, on which Paul Chambers plays this iconic bass line melody that goes like this, which is then echoed by, and then it changes key, it goes to E flat minor, and then it goes back to D minor. What's interesting about the walking, though, is the amount of wrong notes he plays. On the Patreon, I circled all of the wrong notes, so that way you can see how many there are. And there's a lot. He plays. So that's three glaring wrong notes in the first four bars. Most of us, when we play multiple bars of the same chord, we're playing something like this. that gets really boring really fast. Nobody wants to hear D minor seven if it's just a D minor seven. People love wrong notes way more than you think and Paul Chambers proved that. This bass line is exceptional, not just because of the way it moves, but because of all the wrong notes that really make it sound different and special and unique. In the last four bars, this is what he plays. Let's hear that in context. That's amazing. You know Miles heard that and loved it. Sometimes those wrong notes really make the bass line. And the way he used wrong notes is simple. He used them as passing tones, just like you do in bebop. But the feeling with which he played them, and the way he understood harmony, and the way he used these phrases and the balance of consonants and dissonance to create this bass language of bass lines and solos and two feel that all kind of revolves around each other. It's all one thing it is really, really special. And of course you can find all the sheet music on the Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis music. Thank you so much for watching. 
I really appreciate the support. I really appreciate all the downloads, all the book orders, all the Patreon subscribers. It means a lot. See you out.